Hello, thank you so much for having me here today. I'm from Canada, I'm 32 years old, and I'm a little big now, but back when I was six, 26 years ago, I started a school charity project, and it changed my life and a whole bunch of other people's lives. So I just want to take you on a journey of how something small can become something big. And I would have been in my grade one class, and I was six years old. So we didn't really think about too much. My main thoughts were, how long does it take to get to recess so I can get home so I could watch my favorite television show? That was it. Except every year at my school, we used to have to do an annual charity fundraiser. It was part of the routine. We had to do something every year. But this year, my teacher wanted to do something a little bit different. So she brought in this list of things that we could say for that were specific things for kids our own age. So. Uh, kid things that kids didn't have. So there was stuff on the list like pencils and notebooks and blankets and all these things that we were going to try to fundraise money for. And then at the end of that list, she said that 70 Canadian dollars would buy a well. And that was important because there were kids our age who couldn't go to school and sometimes got sick and died because they didn't have clean water. And we were very confused in my classroom. I remember we used, we asked my teacher, why don't they just go to the sink, to the water fountain? Problem solved, get some water. And my teacher did that thing that teachers do sometimes. She said, no, that's not how that works. Not everyone has taps around the world and can go get water whenever they want. They have to go really far to go get it. And if they're going far, they can't go to school because they're going to get water for their family. So we were confused beyond means. We asked all sorts of questions like how far they have to walk and my teacher said on the sheet it said sometimes up to five kilometers. We were six and seven. We didn't know how far five kilometers was. it. So my teacher tried to explain it to us and she said that's about 5,000 steps which didn't really help because I couldn't count that high but I counted the steps it took me to get from my classroom to the water fountain and I counted 10 steps and we were in kindergarten well we just come out of kindergarten like preschool so one of the things that was forced upon us almost was sharing in the classroom that it was a fair and equal place and so we felt we had been lied to it was this big conspiracy and my teacher kind of just shrugged and said eh, if you want to raise money for something on this list it will help so we were deciding who would fund raise money for what on the list and the well came up. It was the most expensive thing. And I raised my hand. And I said, I want to fundraise for that. To which my teacher kind of just looked at me and said, you know, are you sure, Ryan? Because I wasn't the type of student to raise my hand. I sat in the back of the classroom and I waited for things to be over so I could go to recess. So my teacher thought I wasn't paying attention, wasn't taking it seriously. So she said, Ryan, this is a big part of our fundraiser. Are you sure you can do it? And I said, don't worry. I've got a plan. I'm going to go home to my parents. I'm going to ask them for the money. And then I'm going to get it from them and come back and give it to you. And then everyone in the world would have clean water. So I thought it was a good plan. I went home to my parents. And it's not like I wanted to buy something for myself. I asked them, can I have $70? There's kids that don't have clean water. And this will help. And my parents looked at me and they said, you know, aw, you know, that's cute. No. And <laughs> went along making dinner, you know. Both my parents worked, they're busy. And I just, I couldn't let it go. I thought, I think they thought I would forget about it. But every time I had a drink, it reminded me that another kid couldn't do that. So I pestered my folks for days until my mom finally, you know, sat me down and said, Ryan, it's great that you care, but we're not going to give you all this money. But if you want to do chores around the house to earn it, we'll give you a chance. And then if you're serious, you can raise the money up for this well. So I already had to do things like make my bed and clear the table, you know, things a six-year-old does. But now I was told I had to do things like vacuum, wash windows, shovel snow, which for those of you not familiar, it is a tough one, a tough chore in Canada. But I started raising little money uh, bit by bit. And I made a commitment and I was going to raise $70. My time limit was about a month. And by the time a month had gone by, I had raised a grand total of $25. <laughs> so I failed, and I don't think my teacher was surprised, maybe a little disappointed, but you know, I was six. 
But I had this idea in my head that if I could just get to $70, it would build a well and would bring the entire world clean water. So it was important. So uh, I ignored it and I decided to keep on going. It took me f what felt like forever. It took me four months, but I finally raised $70 and I was so excited. I had done so many different things to raise the money. I had, and I brought it back to my school and they actually wouldn't take the money anymore because the fundraiser had ended a long time ago. So my mom uh, helped find an organization that did that kind of thing. They built clean water wells all over the world in the big city where I'm from, a city called Ottawa. And I remember I got the day off of school and I got to go in with my cookie tin filled with change and I brought it to them and I said, this is to build a well. And they kind of looked at me like my parents did when I came home with the idea. They said, you know, oh, you know, that's cute. They showed me around their office and explained what they did. And they said, Ryan, it's going to cost a little bit more than $70 to build a well. Back then, it was like 1998. Back then, they said it was going to cost at least $2,000. would just buy the hand pump that went on top of the well. But you know, they said, this will help, and you know, off you go. And I told them that before I left, I would just go home and do more chores and come back once I had $2,000. And we got home and my mom said to my dad, like, yeah, it's not over. He's trying to raise $2,000 now. And my dad was just like, oh my God. You know, I, my dad, he's retired now, but he was a police officer for the city of Ottawa. And he would volunteer basketball coach the high school team in my town. And I looked up to him a lot. And I had a chat with him where he said, you know, Brian, you showed perseverance and tenacity and you followed through in your commitment and you didn't give up. And you should feel proud of that. But it's okay to stop. You know, my dad wasn't trying to be rude or mean or put me down. He was just, you know, a grown up. And he knew that the world's got big problems, especially clean water on the other side of the world. And that is, you know, I would have just turned seven. His seven year old son couldn't, you know, solve that. So he didn't want me to feel sad and discouraged once I realized how big the problem actually was. But I still thought I wasn't an adult. I was a seven-year-old. And I thought that that one well would make all the difference in the world. So I decided to keep on doing chores. That wasn't enough, so I ended up doing chores for my neighbors. That also wasn't enough. I went back to my classroom. I tried to get my friends to do chores. It didn't work at all. So I started doing little fundraisers. I did a Pokemon card raffle. I did a bump basketball tournament, all these things that kids do. And a few of my friends took notice, and it became less of my project and more of my class's project and my school, and people all over my town started to support it. And it took a lot of work. It took over a year of fundraising, but we finally were able to build a well. And it went towards a school in a country called Uganda, and that school got the first clean water source it had ever had, and it made a huge difference. And I was really lucky I was able to go to that school a few years later. And there was a big, huge celebration at the school. There were over 5,000 people there. There was a feast and a celebration, and everyone was just so happy because they had clean water. And you know, I still don't have a smile on my face because I can have something I considered so small. But it made this huge difference. So I came back to Canada, and I talked to anyone who would listen to me. The story grew. It was in uh, newspapers and radio shows and on television. And it gave us the momentum to create something called the Ryan's Well Foundation. And that would have been 22 years ago. And since then, we've been able to help bring over 1.4 million people clean water in 17 countries all around the world. And it's, <laughs> and it's crazy to think that those accomplishments happened because of my overdue grade one school project. When I was in grade one, I was not a leader. I liked to sit in the back, wait for things to be done so I could play video games. I wasn't the smartest. I thought that one well would literally bring the world clean water when it's a complicated pro problem that needs sustainability and a lot of attention to it. But if I knew everything I knew now working in the water field as a kid, I'm not sure I ever would have started. So I think my only message to everyone here today is that sometimes it's important to think like a six-year-old. When you have a passion and you find something you're connected to, it's easy to think like a grown-up and come up with a hundred reasons why it's not a good idea, why you're going to fail. 
It's easy. Instead, think like a six-year-old. Raise your hand. Do something small. And it may change the world. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.